You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the Shamayim above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the wickedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those that hate me. Exodus 20, 3 through 5. Shalom, family. Today we would like to shine the light on yoga and expose the dangers it poses for believers of the Most High. We will go into some details that many who practice this may not know and reveal why doing yoga could have some major implications on their lives and their relationship with the Most High Yah. Before we get into this video, we ask that you please like and share it as this will help more people be reached and hopefully become free from the bondage that this activity brings to their lives. Now, let's begin. Yoga is an ancient practice said to focus on breathing, flexibility, and strength, and also said to boost mental and well-being. It is composed of physical, mental, and spiritual practices or disciplines. It has a national day, June 21st, as well as the whole month, September, dedicated to it. It is clouded for its health benefits and suggested by health officials as a way to get healthy and relieve stress. Seems harmless and innocent on the surface, but it is not. Before believers in the Most High involve themselves in anything, they should know what is behind it, especially when it comes to the things of this world. Yoga isn't just stretching. It isn't just about meditation. It isn't just about breathing. Yoga has so many parts to it, and whether a believer decides they do certain parts, excluding other parts, as unto the Most High, it cannot be separated from its origins. Because it cannot be separated from its origins, it is not something that should be a part of a believer's life. Let's dig a little deeper into this practice that has so many people blinded by its so-called benefits. So what is yoga? Yoga is, in Sanskrit, literally, yoke or union. It is a group of physical, mental, and spiritual practices or disciplines which originated in ancient India and aimed to control or yoke and still the mind, recognizing a detached witness consciousness untouched by the mind, C-H-I-T-T-A, and mundane suffering, D-U-H-K-H-A. There is a wide variety of schools of yoga, practices, and goals in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, and traditional and modern yoga is practiced worldwide. According to Michael Burley, the first use of the root of the word yoga is in hymn 5.81.1 of the Rigveda, a dedication to the rising sun god, where it has been interpreted as yoke or control. According to yoga.ayush.gov.in, the word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yuj, meaning to join or to yoke or to unite. As per yogic scriptures, the practice of yoga leads to the union of individual consciousness with that of the universal consciousness, indicating a perfect harmony between the mind and body, man and nature. Simply put, Yoga is defined essentially as a spiritual discipline based on an extremely subtle science, which states that it focuses on bringing harmony between mind and body. Yoga literally means to yoke or unite. A person practicing yoga is yoked through chanting, breathing, meditating, or physical movements called postures or poses. Each yoga pose is designed to create a yoke or union of the person who practices with three unique Hindu gods, B-R-A-H-M-A, S-H-I-V-A, and V-I-S-H-N-U, the Hindu version of the Holy Trinity. 
The poses invites the deity to enter the body, be yoked to them, and be unified with their soul, mind, will, and emotions, and their body, flesh. It is believed that there are 19 different types of yoga and 66 basic yoga postures. Though recognizing a cosmic creator known as I-S-H-V-A-R-A, most Hindu and Vedanic yoga traditions emphasize self-realization as their focus. Yoga is not a belief system such as Christianity. Yoga practices don't necessarily have a religious overtone, but they do have a spiritual connotation or overtone. It was always connected to the spiritual, and spirituality was never separated. Yoga is more aligned with the mystical experience. With the information that we have learned thus far, believers should know to stay away from this wicked practice, but we will continue. The History of Yoga Yoga originated thousands of years ago in India, according to artsandculture.google.com. The word was first mentioned in ancient texts called the Rig Veda, a set of four ancient sacred texts written in Sanskrit containing a collection of over a thousand hymns and mantras. Yoga was refined and developed by Rishis, a sage, one who sees or hears divine knowledge, who documented their practices and beliefs in the Upanishad, a huge work containing over 200 scriptures. Yoga is amongst the six schools of philosophy in Hinduism and is also a major part of Buddhism and its meditation practices. In 1890, yoga took off in the West when Indian monks began spreading their knowledge to the Western world for the first time. It is credited to Swami Vivekananda, who came to the U.S. in 1883. He is also well known for introducing America to Hinduism. He began organizing world conferences on the subject of yoga by describing yoga as a quote-unquote science of the mind, and he translated yogic texts from Sanskrit into English. In 1893, he sparked the country's interest by demonstrating yoga at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. As a result, many other Indian yogis and swamis were welcomed with open arms. By the 1970s, you could find yoga and spiritual teachings everywhere. B.K.S. Iyengar was another influential figure in the spread of Indian spiritual philosophy across the world. Iyengar's approach to yoga targeted various ailments, diseases, and disorders. Based on his belief of healing himself through yoga, he dedicated his life to healing others through yoga by developing specific programs of yoga of asanas to be adjusted based on a person's stage of recovery. He popularized yoga in Western countries by appearing on the television in the UK and the USA. Now we're going to look at some of the different parts that make up yoga and try to break them down. The parts of yoga. Mantras. The repetitive sounds used to penetrate the depths of the unconscious mind and adjust the vibrations of all aspects of a person's being. Mantras are chanted aloud, delved upon, or listened to. They are typically chanted in Sanskrit derived from the root word man, meaning to think, and tra, or tre, meaning to protect or to free from bondage or free from the mind. The earliest mantras were composed in Vedic Sanskrit in India and believed to be at least 3,000 years old. They existed in various schools of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. They come in many forms. Typically, they are melodic and have mathematically structured meters. AUM and OM are the most basic of mantras. OM is a sacred sign, an invocation, the action of invoking something or someone for assistance or as an authority. OM is a symbol of oneness in Hinduism and other world religions. 
The AUM symbol or OM, the symbol in the center of AUM, symbolizes the universe and the ultimate reality. It is the most important Hindu symbols. According to their belief, at the dawn of creation, from emptiness first emerged a syllable consisting of three letters, A-U-M, often written as O-M. They believe that chanting the word O-M raises the vibrations of an individual, not just in body, but in the overall consciousness of one's soul and mind. On a more sophisticated level, they are melodic phrases with spiritual interpretations. Chakras. In Sanskrit, the word chakra means disc or wheel. It is energy centers or points that are believed to be connected to different aspects of human life. In yoga, it is used for balancing and stabilizing the physical body through a sauna practice, which are yoga postures said to rebalance the whole body. Yoga participants use it to help advance spirituality, break down mental boundaries, and expand consciousness. Prana, a Sanskrit term that translates to life force or vital energy. According to the yoga practice, it refers to the universal energy that flows in and around human bodies, believed to be the breath and the sustaining force of life itself. Spiritually, prana represents the connection between the material and the spiritual. Prana can be cultivated and channeled through various practices such as pranayama, breath control exercises, meditation, yoga, and through mindful awareness of the breath and body in daily activities. Pranayama is the yogic practice of focusing on breath. In yoga, breath is associated with prana, thus they believe pranayama is a means to elevate the life energies. Breath exercises or breath suspensions are thought to clear the physical and emotional, to free the breath. Asana are physical yoga postures or poses. When people say they are going to a yoga class, they most likely are going to an asana class, which is said to be a small part of yoga. It is a body posture, originally and still a general term for a sitting meditation pose, and later extended into hatha yoga and modern yoga as exercise, to any type of position, adding reclining, standing, inverting, twisting, and balancing poses. Asana can also be translated as a steady, comfortable seat, particularly for the purpose of meditation. This is a part of a quote from a convert to Christianity after 22 years of yoga and new age practices and beliefs. Yoga postures are offerings to the gods. If one does the poses and the breathing technique with the meditation, then one will be accepted by a god, little g. Mudra, a seal, gesture, or mark. Yoga mudras are symbolic gestures often practiced with hands and fingers that facilitate the flow of energy in the subtle body and enhance the journey within. They are ancient symbolic seals that may hold the key to deepening the connection to the yoga practice. There are many different types that help one to achieve or receive different levels or go deeper by doing them in specific ways. Performing mudras are said to stimulate the flow of prana, life force or energy throughout the body to quiet the mind by focusing it on the simple touch of one's hands or fingers and to intensify the power of the practice. Sacred symbolic hand gestures designed to deepen one who practices yoga and awaken the power of the quote unquote divine. Note. When they say divine, they are not referring to the Most High Yah. N-A-M-A-S-T-E It is a common greeting in Indian culture that has transcended borders and become popular wor worldwide. N-A-M-A-S-T-E holds a deep spiritual significance. It is a way of connecting with the inner self in the universal consciousness. 
It is a union of the individual soul and the quote unquote divine soul. We will continue to remind you that in yoga, when they say the divine, they are not talking about Yahuwah. Although some say that it can be whomever you serve, that is not how it works with Yahuwah. It is a spiritual greeting that acknowledges the divinity within a connection between two souls. N-A-M-A-S-T-E literally means bowing to you. In Hinduism, it also has a spiritual importance reflecting the belief that the divine and self, A-T-M-A-N and self, is the same in you and me and suggests I bow to the divine in you. The hands together gesture is a well-known cultural practice that originated in Hinduism. It comes from N-A-M-A-H to bow or honor T-E you, Sanskrit meaning I bow or honor you. It is said to acknowledge the quote unquote divine spark recognizing the worth of a person in front of you connecting with a higher power. It can also be connecting with nature, developing a deeper connection with nature and the environment. The moon, sun, and stars are considered divine in many cultures. It is expressing their gratitude towards nature. The Lotus Flower The Lotus Flower is one of the eight auspicious symbols of Buddhism. It is a sign of purity and spiritual awakening. The lotus flower is often depicted with eight petals, symbolizing the Buddhist eightfold path. The lotus flower blossoming from mud can be taken to represent the spiritual path to enlightenment. Different colors of lotus flowers in Buddhism have different meanings. For example, white lotus flowers represent spiritual perfection, while red lotus flowers symbolize heartfelt compassion and love. In Hinduism, the lotus flower is associated with fertility, prosperity, and eternity. Many of the Hindu gods and goddesses are depicted with the lotus flower. L-A-K-S-H-M-I, the goddess of prosperity and wealth, is often shown seated on a lotus flower. The lotus flower in Hinduism generally represents the ability of a wise person to be liberated from attachment and go about their daily lives doing what is right without concern for the outcome. In Hindu, Buddhist, and Egyptian religions, the lotus is considered a sacred flower. Among its many meanings and significance, the lotus is believed by some to be a symbol of spontaneous generation, and so it also represents divine birth, spiritual development, and creation itself. The bud of the lotus symbolizes potential, specifically of a spiritual nature. Because the lotus rises from unclean water to blossom as a pure, uncontaminated flower, it is a symbol of purity and resurrection. Additional information about yoga. Yoga in the West is primarily thought of as Hatha yoga, focuses on posture and breathing techniques, traditionally to channel vital energy source and is a slower practice form. Side note. Channeling here means the practice of professedly entering a meditative or trance-like state in order to convey messages from a spiritual guide. There are many schools and styles emphasizing the many different aspects of the practice. Christian Yoga. The title was possibly coined by A.K. Mazumdar, a Hindu who converted to Christianity. He considered traditional yoga postures as a form to pray while as a Hindu, as well as when he became a Christian, using these postures of prayer as a way to commune with the L-O-R-D. Mazumdar delivered lectures primarily in Washington State, Oregon, and California based on his teachings that combine Christianity and Hinduism which he referred to as Christian yoga. Now that we have a pretty good background and enough information on yoga, let's now address some of the arguments some believers of the Most High make for doing this practice, thinking 
it is okay. For one, they think that because some man has coined the phrase Christian yoga, that makes it now Kodesh or holy. Yahuwah has always wanted his people to abstain from unclean things, and he still wants it that way. Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the Kodesh and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Yoga has been and still is an unclean and profane thing because it is Eastern pagan spirituality and it's an open door to alternate spiritualities. We have said it in some of our other videos and it bears repeating. Changing anything, especially things used for the worship of other Elohim, little e, by slapping Christian on it doesn't make it Kodesh or holy. Most people who think it is okay to do yoga probably wouldn't accept Christian magic, Christian voodoo, or Christian witchcraft. Why? Because they know those things are wicked. The truth about yoga is that in all forms, no matter how it's repackaged, are forms of idol worship. It is the worship of false Elohim. There is another foolish logic that some believers may have, and it is this. The Most High created everything, citing scriptures like Genesis 1-1 and John 1-1-3. Therefore, it's perfectly fine to participate in yoga because it is a created thing. Well, just because something was created doesn't mean it was created of the Most High. It was not. Yahuwah makes it clear what we are to stay away from because some things give honor and esteem to false deities. Yoga is one of those things. Yoga causes one to offer their bodies and minds to unclean spirits. It causes one to empty their minds and can lead people to leave their bodies. We believers belong to Yah and we are bought or redeemed for him and him alone. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you were bought with a price. Therefore esteem Elohim in your body and in your spirit, which are of Elohim. People will say that they do yoga because it relieves their stress, that it helped them overcome issues they had in their bodies, or because their doctor recommends it for better health. That is the allure and deception of this wicked practice. The enemy is good at what he does, and one of those things that he is good in is deception. Convincing people to think that something wicked is good. People wouldn't be drawn to it if it didn't have some kind of benefit that makes it acceptable by the masses. People will fight tooth and nail to keep yoga as a part of their life, and it could quite possibly be that they do feel some type of benefit from doing it. There could be a feeling of being more relaxed, lesser stressed, or less pain in the body, but that doesn't mean it is from Yah. It is a false sense of peace and by choosing to do yoga, it could stop the work of the Ruach or spirit of Yah because he's not going to be able to work in someone who willingly yokes themselves with demonic spirits. Yah should be your source for health and peace. He may lead you to do something or to let go of something, but whatever the case may be, it will be his leading and he won't lead you to yoga. Some people may think that if something was wrong with doing yoga, they would know it or sense it and that it wouldn't feel good. The problem with that statement is that yes, people should know if what they are doing is wrong. But many people lack good judgment and discernment and continue in wrong things. And just because something feels good doesn't mean that it is good. Sin might feel good, but on the other side of sin is destruction. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but its end is the way of death. Let's do a summary because this is a lot of information. Yoga practices today have been diluted in its intentions and teachings, but it is still dangerous. Yoga started as a Hindu practice. Yoga is suggested to people as a healthy lifestyle change, but it isn't for the believer. 
Yoga opens one to influences from demonic powers and to receive demons. Yoga is a form of worship, but never was and is not the worship of or to the Most High. You cannot separate yoga from the spiritual energies inherent in the practice. Even how you hold your hands in a yoga pose has a spiritual component to it. Yoga focuses on the internal self. Some people who participate in yoga are unaware of the deep spiritual connection. They think it is only stretching, breathing, and or calming the mind or meditation, and this is what makes this so dangerous. There is nothing beneficial about yoga because it is a wicked spiritual practice that causes people to use their bodies to seek for things from demonic powers. This is not of Yah. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Do you not know that your body is a mishkan of the Ruach HaKadosh who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from Elohim, and that you are not your own property? Ignorance keeps people in bondage and could be dangerous for a believer. So if you have practiced yoga, ask the Most High for forgiveness, repent, and denounce your participation in yoga. You can also ask Yah to break that yoke and sever all that binds you to that wicked practice. Remember, the only yoke we are to take and have is Yahushua's. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace, and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. In closing, please stay away from this demonic practice and all things associated with it. If you have a yoga mat, yoga pants, or any other things in your home that's yoga related, we would encourage you to destroy them. There are many items that can be accursed and you want to get rid of all the things connected to this wicked practice. By no means is this all the information associated with yoga, but we believe that this should be more than enough to help you see that this is not something of the most high. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Please share this with those you know so that they can get a hold of this information and know the truth. If you haven't done so already, we ask that you please like and subscribe as this helps us to point more people to Yah. We love you and are praying for you. Until next time, family, Shalom. Shalom.